Okay class, in this video we're going to take a look at the female reproductive system. And what we're going to do is a little bit of compared anatomy between um, felines and humans as well as some comparative between pregnant and non-pregnant. So what you'll see in this particular video is the abdominal contents. We have the spleen here, we have the small intestine, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move those sort of up and out of the way. Okay. What you'll see there is underneath, this is the, for reference, we have the large intestine, the descending um, colon, that's going to go down. And on each side of that, you're going to see some structures. Okay, I'm going to lift this up. And humans, uh, human female uh, reproductive anatomy, we have the uterus. And off of the uterus, you have the fallopian tubes that go up to the um, up to the ovaries. Now, with felines, because we have multiple offspring, we need a little bit more room. So <clears throat> we find that the, the uterus is there, but it is smaller than what you would see, at least um, comparatively to humans. And these branches off of each side, I know the contrast isn't great, but these are pretty good examples. Okay, so if I can pull it off a little bit, you'll see that there are these tubes. I can uh, change the angle on the lighting there maybe a little bit. No, nope, not going to make much difference. Okay, we have these tubes that come off, and these are actually called uterine horns. This is where the offspring are going to develop. So they may implant here and here and here, depending on how many there are, and start to grow. And I'll show you that here in a moment. Okay? These, um, these uterine horns are actually going to be attached to the abdominal wall with a membrane. Right? And if we wanted to cut through it, it's a fairly small membrane, and it is very similar to the, uh, at least in looks, to the uh, mesentery. If we follow these up, you'll actually see it ends. All right. There's an artery that comes out, and then if we can flip it over, actually see, oh no, don't need to flip it over. Right inside, embedded in it, is the ovary. All right, site of um, egg production and ovulation. And then if we flip it over, you can see a very small, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it in the video, there's a little bit of a coiled tube on the backside. So let me get my self-positioned correctly. So if you can zoom in just a little bit further um, and focus. I shall try here again. So you have a coil tube. So there's your fallopian tube. Okay. And it's going to lead into the uterine horn. All right. Now we do also have a ligament that is going to help hold these to the abdominal wall. All right, so ovulation would occur, goes down the fallopian tube into the um, uterine horn where it could be fertilized. All right, after <clears throat> um, gestation occurs, the, um, the, the babies are going to pass through the uterus, which sits right behind the bladder. So bladder is here, if you lift that up, You'll see the uterus here. I'll pass through that for um, for birth. Okay, so you can see the placement of the bladder and how that may cause a problem. So let's take a quick look now. I'm going to move over to another specimen here. I'm actually going to be pregnant. Let me get myself positioned correctly. I'll see some variation quite a bit of variation. So this specimen is actually very pregnant, um, probably not too far away from giving birth, which is unfortunate. Um, but what we'll see here is the uterine horns, if you refer back to that last picture, these are the uterine horns. So you see how big they are. So we have a lot of blood flow that has been added for fetal development. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, and one more underneath five kittens that were being developed. Okay. Now you'll notice as this, and when I set it up, I set it up pretty much in place. So the um, abdominal contents actually shift up. 
Um, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of growth here, and things do get moved around. If you look down here fairly low, and underneath, here is the bladder. So you can imagine, as pregnancy gets further along, there's pressure put on the bladder, which is why many females complain of having to go to the bathroom more frequently when they're pregnant. So, um, I'll go ahead and move some of this out of the way. And you'll see, so uterine horn comes up here, here, kind of twists around, and it goes wherever um, it can find space. It's going to develop based on stress. Okay? And then as you get deep in here, there's actually the end of it, and here is your um, ovary. So there's the ovary there. Again, the ligament is still in place. It's a little bit stronger to help hold things together. Uh, membranes are still there. Those haven't been dissected. But what I do want to show you is a change in the size of the blood supply. And you can see this through the vein. So here, this is being uh, actually blood flow coming back from the developing fetuses. Okay, It looks almost as big as what the inferior vena cava would be size-wise but it's actually going to feed back into the inferior vena cava, which is right, get that out of the way, right here on the bottom. Not dissected out real well, but you can sort of see um, what we have. So it's a very large um, vessel, and we're getting a lot more blood flow to these, okay? Because there's a lot of development that do, does need to occur, especially when you're having um, five babies. Now, again, as we look a little bit lower, you can see where they come together. So here is the left uh, uterine horn, and this one is the right uterine horn. Come together right here, and actually you can see uterus um, right here. Okay? Now, uh, I'm not going to dissect these out right now. Uh, the specimen is being dissected by a group of students who are actually very interested in um, doing this part of the dissection on their own. So I don't want to uh, get ahead uh, get ahead on this particular uh, specimen and, and ruin the learning process for them. So, but what I do have actually are some previously dissected um, specimens that I can show you. So, if you're not interested in seeing um, kittens, you're welcome to turn the video off at this point, but just to give you an idea from a developmental standpoint, what we're looking at. So, this one actually is probably somewhere um, closer to being born, you can see some features and uh, that are, are reminiscent of what you would see when it's born. So you have eyes, nose, eyes are closed, you can see the tongue just a little bit, um, you see paws, you can see claws, you can see tail as well, so we're very well along there. Ribs are being um, developed also. Now what we do have, if we move the paws out of the way, you can see on the belly is the umbilical cord. Okay. Now this one has been dissected out completely and what we've done is we've removed everything. We've cut the umbilical cord there. Um, we've cut the umbilical cord so that um, the placenta and everything else is attached. So the placenta and the membranes actually when this comes out it looks like it's all completely wrapped up in, um, in membrane um, in placenta. So you have to actually remove that. There's a membrane that goes over top of the entire thing that then feeds into the umbilical cord to nourish and support the baby. Okay. Now, to give you a little bit further development here, this one is a little bit bigger, probably close to, no, I think this was a little bit further along than what we have here. So I'm guessing that size-wise, um, this is probably as far along as we are in development with this specimen. So we'll set that off to the side and we'll look at the larger one. This one you can actually see um, fur, you can see whiskers a little bit better, tongue sticking out. Um, but again, uh, the umbilical cord is here um, and it was attached to the same sort of membranes and placenta as it, um, as it was um, <clears throat> with the other one. Okay. And demonstrate in class. Um, for those of you that are in class, we'll be able to see uh, the dissection. We will demonstrate it, and then I'll allow the students to continue to uh, dissect some of them out. So, um, just so you're aware of the female reproductive system, um, let's go back over to our 
non-pregnant specimen. And do a quick review. I'll zoom in just a little bit more. Okay, so uh, this is uh, sitting in the back of the uh, the back of the abdominal wall. So we've moved the intestines out of the way. Bladder sits on top. We lift that up, move it out of the way. We have the uterus. We have the uterine horns going down to the fallopian tubes um, and the ovary. And technically, if you're looking at um, egg movement, it's going the opposite direction. Okay. So just a quick overview of what we have with felines and what you will see in the female reproductive system.